Hi, I'm Drew Loker, and today I'm going to be taking apart a Wise camera. And if you're not familiar with the Wise camera, it's a wildly popular, economical, but very well-made, great company. If you're if you're not familiar with, this is their newest camera, and this is not a comparison of version three uh, to the other models that I've got right here. But um, you know, if you're not into repairs, just um, you know, this is disposable electronics for the most part. Uh, the original cameras were around $25. Um, I bought my first one at version one and uh, immediately liked them and had bought more expensive cameras. This is one of the first Wi-Fi cameras a few years ago that was you know, very inexpensive, very economical. But also the quality of the product was immediately obvious. Then there was version two. I have to put them outdoors. I put them in uh, outdoor enclosures. There was some water intrusion. I lost a couple of from water into the uh, uh, power outlet. Um, a couple of them got foggy lenses. And, uh, I replaced them with version three, so I've had a few of these broken cameras around. You know, for $30, if you're gonna spend more than 15, 30 minutes or so, uh, it'd be better just go ahead and replace the camera. But if you like to tinker, uh, I did watch a few videos starting up. They're, they were helpful, but there were some missing pieces. So I've got one taken apart here. We're gonna take a look at it here. So I actually went through another video. I had a bad power board. This is the camera right here. It, um, it lights up, but it does not power up. And then I had another one that had a foggy camera. At this point now, I've learned enough about it that I'm gonna show you how to clean up the camera. And as long as there's nothing else wrong with it, you know, if you've had a couple of these cameras outdoors and you've replaced them, maybe you wanna repair one of these back up to, to working. So on this particular camera, I'm just gonna set it to the side right here. On this one, I've got it labeled number two because um, it's easy to get confused. So this is the one that I just repaired, number four right here. And I took one from another unit that had a good camera and another one that had um, a bad board. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and take this from the top. A few things about repairs if you haven't done things like this before. I like to use an egg crate, not the styrofoam type, the paper fiber, it's a lot easier. And you can go ahead and put your screws in as you're taking them apart and you can kind of track which one's which. And if you really wanna do it nice, you know, have these compartments labeled and on a piece of paper, write down what goes into that compartment. Uh, I've taken apart quite a few things that don't go back together but it's all part of the process of learning it, uh, how to do things like this. I've also acquired some tools through buying things like iPhone, cell phone uh, repair kits, battery replacements. Um, I did buy this Pro uh, a video game screwdriver set. It has a long list of different uh, game systems that you might want to take apart. It's got your Torx screws, your Phillips heads, um, your security screws, and it's also a ratcheting handle, so it's pretty cool. But even with this, it's necessary to get a hold of um, other sc screwdrivers. Um, like this one is a, a very, very small Phillips head. And I was just about to take apart the camera when I realized uh, something here I'm about to show you. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get into this repair here. The first two screws are easy to take out. Um, Phillips 00 does the job here. And I'm going to drop that screw into our egg crate. I like to work on a piece of funny foam in case something does uh, fall out of my hands. It hits the board, but it can also bounce and hit the ground. So I've um, got my very bright flashlight ready to go so I can find it on the carpet at the floor below. All right, so uh, the video that I watched was pretty good about showing how to get into these first few pieces here. Knowing where something comes apart is really important so they don't tear it up. So we're gonna go back to this case here. And this first, uh, first camera here, actually, let's look at this piece here. So here is the bottom and the case here. So what I want to show you very closely is that it has the two screws and then the two mounts on the opposite side of the screws. So that's where we're going to want to apply some pressure to the case to be able to take this apart. So knowing where the mounting tabs are is important to find out before you start tearing into something. We can go ahead and work this out just a little bit, but it's not going to break free until we break this tab free right here. So we get that tab right there on the side. There we go. All right, I can see where this one's had some water damage in there. So we'll put the base aside. The next stage is to, again, know where the tabs are to get this back plate. And this is the part where on another video, good job introducing everything, but skipped over this little step. So we're going to look at what essentially is the speaker assembly. So the speaker assembly fits in to the back, or the back of the camera is also where the speaker is attached. And there are four tabs along the side, and looking very, very carefully up underneath here, we're gonna see where to remove and apply the correct pressure. 
and actually I, I pried and pried and prodded and, and really all you gotta do is just pull out on this two sides right here. That one snapped, that one snapped, and then you can kind of just work it out and it, it just comes apart right there. All right, so we're actually good to go without actually using our screwdriver to pry it apart. So we're gonna carefully remove the uh, speaker assembly. Plug is very easy to remove. Uh, just wiggle it back a little bit. I try not to pull by the wires, so try to push up on the plastic while pulling on the wires. Don't pull just by the wires. So we've got our speaker assembly ready to go. Put it over here on the side. Okay, so this is what I've learned here after taking apart a few of these that hopefully I can spare you a little bit of time, especially since I'm not gonna be trying to interchange the boards. There's only one screw that removes this entire camera assembly, the logic board, the, uh, the antenna for the Wi-Fi is still attached over here. So we are going to carefully lift that up. Now, um, notice where this is gonna come apart. So the antenna goes between the USB receptacles right there. So um, I was a little worried about it on a previous one, but I guess it, sit, it fits flat enough. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and lift up the um, antenna connection and I wanna pry right up underneath the mount just so that I'm not, there we go. It comes off very easily, but I don't wanna damage the very, very fine connection there. Okay, so now we can go ahead and remove the Wi-Fi antenna, move it out of the way. So there are some screws right here mounting the, uh, this particular board, the power board, but I don't even need to get to that just yet. So we're just gonna remove this one screw. There's this post going through here. So you see th uh, two screws, but you don't want those two. You want the one that's hidden down inside. So I did have to get this particular uh, Phillips head. And I can leave the screw in there. It tends to stay in there. And then this camera assembly lifts up and out so that we've got our, our case and then the camera right here. The moisture is not on the outside of this optics that I found. Now you could have some moisture inside the, the lens assembly, but where I found the moisture on this last one was between the sensor and the lens assembly. All right, so we've got to get into that. So we've got a couple of ribbon cables we're going to contend with here. So we're going to take uh, this ribbon cable and very carefully lift up on that. And then we're going to pull this out right there. And we can actually go ahead and remove the two screws here now. And put that in its third, number three up there. Number two or three, actually depending on what order. I already had something in number one, but as long as you're keeping track, this is the second set of screws. And if you really wanna make sure you get this back together, make sure you label it. So that's the only thing that's keeping the power board into place so far. Two screws and this ribbon cable, but there's another ribbon cable underneath it. So be careful about just pulling it away too quickly there because there's one more ribbon cable that we're about to get access to there. All right, so underneath is this next ribbon cable. So uh, let's make sure it's good and focused for you to see this. So we're gonna lift up. Right in the center of the mount for the ribbon cable is a indentation that you can lift up on. You can also lift up on the ends right there. And you can use your finger or nail on this. It's pretty easy to lift these up. All right, so blue up. We put that back together. And you can see the water intrusion on this board. I'm surprised this board still works. But I, I just unplugged this from where it was still in use, seeing if something was getting into our chicken coop area. All right, so now we're down to four screws on top of the camera assembly and the logic boards for the camera. Um, so there's these four screws. So let's look very, very carefully at this right here. All right, these two mount the camera assembly to the case. These two right here with the brass outer ring mount the camera to the sensor. So when we get ready to open these, we wanna make sure we're ready to go. It is important to watch videos like this all the way through. Should have mentioned that at the very first. I have uh, sometimes watched a video and got started on the repair and then halfway through not have watched the video despite a warning and despite having known better, ended up breaking a piece of equipment, uh, specifically an iPhone 5. I was taking apart the iPhone 5S to replace the battery and I had not watched the video all the way through only to discover that there was a ribbon cable that was uh, very easily broken. And had I watched the video all the way through, I would have known a little bit better about how to make sure not to damage it. Okay, so we're going to be lifting this out. Now, I don't really want to mess up the orientation here. But um, let's look at the other one here for just a minute. What we're trying to do. This one's going to be just damaged. Although the, the camera is in good shape, so I might use this for another camera later. The, the, uh, the lens assembly. So we're going to remove these two screws and then this plastic piece is going to come away from 
uh, the logic board right there. And when we do that, we're gonna have the capability of introducing dust inside the sensor. Now getting dust on the front of the lens is bad, but getting dust on the sensor, that's just the end of the camera because dust shows up very large when it's right there on the sensor. So we're gonna be very uh, methodical about this and make sure that we don't introduce dust, don't, don't stop this process right here. Watch this through and then uh, attempt it. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of clean up some dust to make sure I don't have any dust on my surface right here. <laughs> Obvious dark, uh, pieces of dirt or lint. Okay, so I'm using my thumb and my index finger to keep the lens assembly connected with the logic board because I don't want it to fall apart on me. So we're ready to go ahead and remove these two pieces right here. All right, the sensor is right there. A little tiny piece right there. That's the, the imager. So I'm gonna keep this in the orientation and I'm gonna keep it centered down so nothing falls on top of it. I'm gonna put it over there on the case. Okay, so I can see the moisture right there and, and hopefully you can too, seeing it right there. All right, so there is a foam pad around the outer portion of this. We don't really wanna use anything metal here, but we're gonna get that foam pad out. Now there is an index mark of that foam pad, but I'm gonna keep the orientation up and down, but there is a little mark right there. Okay, there's, there's that disc. Now I don't even know what this is. It's probably an anti-halation or um, an infrared, maybe UV. It's plastic. I'm just gonna go ahead and let it fall into my hand. Now this may have an orientation. So it just fell out so that this is toward the lens and this is toward the sensor and I use a, uh, a lens cleaning tissue. Put a little breath on it. That's the cleanest thing you've got. You don't wanna put any lens cleaner on it. Okay, so that's really clean now. You can't see it, but it was really foggy a minute ago. You don't wanna blow on the back of the lens. You're more likely to introduce something like dust. All right, we're ready to put the foam piece back into place. And then we're gonna put the sensor board back in visually line up those screws right there and so these two screws were a little different hopefully you didn't put those in the wrong place all right so all the other uh, black screws were the same thumb was getting in the way there all right if you ever have a little trouble with those screws falling out of place you can put just a little bit of vaseline on it so it sticks if you don't have a magnetic screwdriver this one is not magnetic Okay, so there is the quick repair. We're going to drop this down into its slot. And then we have the other two black screws there. So I had four screws that mounted the camera assembly or the camera board, the lens sensor board. Two of them were small. The smaller ones that actually pulled the camera back onto this, uh, the sensor. So now we're just reassembling, and there was nothing else wrong with this particular camera. Hopefully we'll get it back together and not have to re-image this, or uh, set up the device again. Okay. All right, reassembling your ribbons. Make sure we get it back together the right way. So we need blue up. It's a little hard to show right here, but uh, we're gonna put that blue ribbon up underneath. You don't want to push hard because you can break that ribbon cable, but we want to at least get a little bit underneath there and then we'll make sure it's straight and we'll push down on that tab. That looks good. This one's a little easier here. Put the two posts into place. That way we've got a little bit of resistance there. This ribbon cable pushes in. It's all, you know, uh, mentioned earlier uh, how impressed I am with the company. If you ever have to contact WISE for tech support, uh, they're very quick with getting a live agent to you. They're, they listen to their their people, their users. Uh, they're coming out with some very innovative products. I recently purchased their Wise Robot vacuum cleaner. I'm very impressed with it. I had not uh, bought into a robot vacuum cleaner until Wise introduced it. And I decided based on my, the, my experience with the cameras that it was worth the um, the risk of buying into the technology that I thought that was still emerging and evolving. All right, so we're ready to slide the camera assembly in. What, what just happened is the screw fell out of this post right here. You can see it sticking out, it's ready to go down into the, into the case. All right, so we're pulling the 
um, Wi-Fi antenna cable out of way, sliding the assembly, clearing the lens, letting the lens drop into place. Alrighty. I'm gonna go ahead and get the Wi-Fi antenna back on prior to putting the screws in, just in case I need to take it back out. Okay, there we go. There was the snap for the Wi-Fi antenna cable. All right, so we've got two more, two more screws to put back into the inside. Problem with the egg crate. Gotta get use tweezers to get the screws out. And you can use your extra small tweezers to drop the screw in right there. Actually, let's go ahead and screw that one down first. That probably would have helped. Okay, so we've mounted the entire assembly back into the exterior case. And we have our two screws to put back in. see why a magnetic screw would be very helpful a screwdriver but for these small little tiny screws uh, as long as you can get to them this works fine what I'm doing ready to reattach the speaker assembly okay. it snaps back into place pretty easily all right, so the last stage right here, putting on the bottom snaps into place also. And then we have uh, just the two screws, the two silver screws go underneath. And then we're ready to go ahead and uh, give it a try. All right, so let's take a look at um, the final result. We'll go into Wise. And I did have to re-add it after disconnecting the boards. But uh, there's the camera. We'll go horizontal there and very clean image. So um, might be easier just to replace the camera, but uh, that's pretty cool. Glad to have solved that. Now this camera will remain indoors from here on out. All right, so hopefully this has been of help and um, we'll see you back on the next video.